I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I wasn't brave enough. I wasn't brave enough to rate this book less than five stars. How fast did I do it? This is it. Hi everyone, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. No, no, no. Hey guys, welcome to Books Under Covers, and today we are going to be doing the Monday reviews of All the Lights We Cannot See. Now, this video not only is a review, but it also is a giveaway, because I want to thank you guys for all the support and everything that just happened yesterday. So, yeah, review and giveaway. Let's go. Now, the first thing I want to say about this book is that this is the longest book that I have read in 2019, and coincidentally, the best one as well. This book goes at about 530 pages in total with a lot of very, very, very small letters. It almost got me in tears at some points. And let me tell you, this is not something that happens a lot. It's not. If it happens once in two years, that's a freaking lot. All the Light We Cannot See was written by Anthony Doerr and was published for the first time in 2014 by the fourth estate publisher. And here is the synopsis to tell you what it is about. For Marie Lohr, blind since the age of six, the world is full of mazes. The miniature of a Paris neighborhood made by her father to teach her the way home, the microscopic layers within the invaluable diamond that her father guards in the Museum of Natural History, the walled city by the sea where father and daughter take refuge when the Nazis invade Paris, and a future which draws her ever closer to Warner, a German orphan destined to labor in the mines until a broken radio fills his life with possibility and brings him to the notice of the Hitler Youth. Two things that I want to talk about in this synopsis that are actually not really good. One of the things is you get the impression by this synopsis that it's going to be a romance where two characters come together and fall in love and blah, 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 and they're going to face the challenges of love. This is basically the idea that you get. This isn't what exactly it is. It's not right at all. The first thing that you have to know is that this is more of a historical fiction, not so much a romance. So if you were thinking of coming into this book like, oh, I'm going to be reading a romance. Oh my God, I, I, I'm going to love this. Forget about it. This is not a romance. The only romantic part that happens lasts for about 50 pages in the 530 and then goes away. So it's not a romance. The other part that I did want to talk about in this synopsis is it says at some point that Marie Loch is drawn to Warner. This is not true. It's actually the other way around. Warner is drawn to Marie Loch. People who write synopsis, please get your facts right. Also, the Financial Times says a masterpiece. What is the Financial Times doing reviewing a book? But don't get me wrong. I am not mad at this book the way I was at the old dragon's head. I freaking rated it five stars. But, like I said, this is actually more of a historical fiction based on one legend and a lot of bravery. Which just translates into... You're gonna be empathetic to the shit out of this book and you're gonna love it. So, let's get right into it. Spoiler alert here, if you haven't read this book and you are planning to just skip ahead, there's gonna be a giveaway at the ending. Don't forget about that, so skip ahead of this part and go straight to the giveaway. I wanted to divide this synopsis a little bit into different parts because the book is a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is going through Marie Love's storyline, then Warner's storyline, then the part where they're together, and then the part after that. And talking about Marie Love first, Marie Love is a blind girl that lives with her father in Paris. Her father is a locksmith in the Natural History of Museum, and when everything starts going down, he is entrusted with a precious item to take away and protect. Now, the thing with this is that they are told to go to this kind of safe house away from Paris, where everyone that is carrying precious things is supposed to take them. But when marie and her father get there, there is no one there. So they take this to the second plan, to the plan B, where they are going to this city called Saint Malo, and they're gonna stay there with marie great uncle. They are well received by another character called Madame Manek, and they know for the first time that her great uncle is kind of sick in the head. He was in the First World War and he saw a lot of his friends dying, a lot of things happened, and he's just afraid of the world. Now, Mahiloch stays there for a while with her father and Madame Manek and her great uncle until at some point her father has to go out and he says that he's gonna be out for max 10 days and he is captured. He never comes back and we see this from Mahiloch's side, which is really, really shocking. Like, she's just there waiting for her father. She goes really depressed for some days until Madame Manek decides to start taking her out. And now here what we see and what I loved about this book is how 
the book empowers women in the way that they are realistic. They are smart, they are brave, they are strong, they have strong personalities. And, and at some point, Madame Manek starts kind of creating a revolution. Notice that it's not Marilor's great uncle, but Madame Manek who does this. The thing is, it's not a full on revolution like we're gonna march on the streets and things like that. No, that would go really, really wrong at that time. But instead, it's a revolution where they plan out things behind the Germans' backs. They uh, make radio transmissions, which was highly illegal at that time. Eventually, Madame Manek dies because she gets sick. And Mahiloch and her great uncle, who is doing way better now, keep that rebellion going. And so at some point, her great uncle is imprisoned as well. He's caught outside doing a revolution kind of thing. And... Yeah, he is imprisoned, he is taken away, and Marilor is left in the house, alone, hiding in a secret room from a German soldier who got to the house and realized that the diamond might be around there. And that's where Warner comes in. If we go into the Warner storyline, this starts out when he and his sister Juta are together living in an orphanage. They are both orphans. And for Warner, there is this constant fear of going to work in the mines as soon as he comes of age. And so, at one point, he finds a broken radio in the streets and he fixes it because he has just a knack for fixing broken things and for engineering in general. And at some point, Warner, because of this fixing ability, starts getting called to fix a lot of other radios, all the radios in the village. He is called in to fix one certain general's radio because he does it while two other specialists weren't able to do it. He is called into the army to be trained and to become an engineer in the army. They alter his age and make him go to the front of the battle because he came up with an invention that locates where the radio is, where the radio station is, and so he gets called up to the front to use this invention and find rogue radios. And this is how he comes across Marilor. He comes to Saint Malo because the Germans are starting to suspect that that's where the diamond that they want is. He listens to Marilor's transmissions because she keeps them going after her great uncle is caught and Warner detects them but he doesn't say anything to anyone because he starts listening to them and he loves the voice and this voice actually reminds him of a time in the past when he used to listen to the radio, so he doesn't say anything to anyone. He finds Marilor in the streets. He doesn't talk to her, but she passes by and he is like immediately in love with her. At some point, Saint Malo comes under heavy siege by the American army and the American and German armies are fighting there and they are given this opportunity of one hour to leave the city, them and the rest of the civilians. So Warner goes and finds Marilor and he helps her out. And at some point he helps her leave, but he tells her that he can't be with her, he can't stay with her because if he goes with her, he's gonna have some problems and he's gonna be captured and be considered a war prisoner. He parts ways with Marilor, but he is captured. And this is where the most mind-blowing, the most ah, annoying turning point happens. The most annoying twist. Warner starts getting sick when he is arrested because he's captured by the American armies before he can get to the Germans. And he has this fever and he starts having hallucinations. And at some point he gets up from his bed in the hospital, kind of. He walks out and he steps on a mine, and he immediately dies. There is actually a sentence in the book when Marilor asks, okay, this isn't funny, it's ironic because she asks him if she's gonna see him again. <laughs> and he says, maybe, maybe not, who knows. And because of this, you're expecting, hey, maybe one day everything will be fine. Now the war is over, everything is fine, maybe one day. But no, he goes ahead, steps on a mine, and he dies. Like. So the story moves on, but fast forward some years, we are with Juta, Warner's sister, and she gets confirmation that her brother has died, she gets some of his items that were found with him, and one of them is the little model house that belonged to Marilor. So she tracks the place where this house came from, and she finds Saint Malo, she goes there, she talks around to the people, and she finds out that Marilor actually doesn't live there anymore because as soon as the war was over, she left that house. She sold it and left. And so she went back to Paris. That's what Juta does. Juta goes to Paris to talk to Marilor and find out everything that Marilor knew about Warner. And this is it. Then we stay with Marilor until the end of the book when Marilor is a grandmother and we are in modern days, like the 2000s. So yeah, that is done. But one thing I noticed about this book and I really, really liked is again, how much it empowers women, but in a realistic way. You can see that women 
are the most important part in this book. They are the center of bravery. They are the center of everything. You can see how much this means. This book is so slow paced and can be con so confusing at some times. I have one recommendation for you to read this book, which is when you are starting a new part, because this book is divided in big parts, when you are starting a new part, pay close attention to the year that is written on top of the page, because this year is where things are happening and this is not a straight timeline. It's not. This goes back and forth a lot. It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it might be complicated for you to understand at some point if you don't pay attention to that where you are in time. It might not make as much sense. And that being said, guys, sadly, we have come to the end of this video. So thank you so much for being here. And <laughs> the video is not over yet. Okay, one more thing that I have to do here is the giveaway, the 500 subscribers giveaway. This is just unbelievable for me. I reached 500 subscribers yesterday, and I don't know how this is possible. I don't know how you guys keep listening to this garbage, but it happened. And you do, and you stay here, and somehow you manage to love it. So I don't know what's happening inside you guys' head, but I do have to thank you for that. So thank you so much, guys. And you know I like to give, so I wanted to give you an even better chance of getting another free book, a giveaway. Last time I was at 200 subscribers, right? And I did the giveaway and I did the 20 euros or $20 giveaway of a book. This time I wanted to do something a little bit different because we are at 500, it's not 200 or 250. So I wanted to do something and instead of $20 or 20 euros, I'm going with $25 or 20 euros. But Two people are going to be the winners of these amazing prizes. This is, this is the news. This is what's different this time. If you are here, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter and pay attention because I'm going to make a tweet about the giveaway. So what you have to do is go up to that tweet, write book on the comments and then retweet. That's all you have to do. And you'll have an entry in the giveaway. Now this is it. Now this is it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was Monday Reviews. I'm going to be back with all things Wednesdays in a bit with a little bit of a surprise. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. More very cool videos are coming your way and you won't want to miss them. So subscribe and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye.